to introduce our first conversation this morning. It brings me great pleasure to welcome the Vice President and the Chief of Staff to the CEO of Western Digital, Celeste Cooper. Thank you, Carl. Visions with values. That is the best way that I can describe our first guest. She is an award-winning author, journalist, former First Lady of California, and a philanthropist. Yet it is not any of these titles that matter. It is the way she moves and motivates others to improve communities, both in California and throughout the world that has always set her apart. Ms. Shriver earned the Peabody Award and was co-anchor of NBC's Emmy Award-winning coverage of the Summer Olympics, executive producer of the Alzheimer's, Alzheimer's Project, and is currently a special anchor and correspondent for NBC News. A graduate of Georgetown University, mother of four amazing children, and author of several books, including What's Heaven and I've Been Thinking. Today, Maria is celebrating one of her children's birthdays, and we were fortunate to have pre-recorded this interview with Maria and the Senior Vice President of Advanced Micro Devices for Worldwide Marketing, HR, Investor Relations, Ruth Cotter. Please welcome Maria Shriver and Ruth Cotter. Hello, and thank you everybody for joining the Silicon Valley Leadership Group's centennial celebration. Um, I'm delighted that we could all gather here today for a conversation with Maria. And um, we're super excited to have you with us, Maria. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. I'm super excited to be here talking to women and uh, to be also in conversation, larger conversation with my great friend, Carl Guardino. Yes, that's awesome. So maybe to kick off, um, Maria, um, reflecting on the progress we've made since the ratification of the 19th Amendment and based on where we are today, what obstacles do you think the next generation of women leaders may have to face and how should we think about them? Well, that's a huge question, right? Uh, as the mother of two uh, young women, I think about that a lot. And uh, I often talk to them, so I'll tell you what I tell them. We've made huge progress, um, huge project progress since I was their age. Mm -hmm. um, I was, uh, when I was working and had my first child, the expectation was I'd come back to work in a week or two. Mm -hmm. um, today, women who are anchoring can safely uh, in the news business anyway, can safely take time off and come back and get their job. That's not the case for every woman in this country. That's where we want to go, that mm -hmm. every person who has a child will be able to take leave and be able to come back uh, to their job. So we've made progress. We have more to go. Mm -hmm. uh, family leave is something that I think is a big, big part of making it possible for women to lead in all different areas of their life and at different stages of their life and having to choose between parenting and leading uh, is a choice that too many people have to make. So I think that that's a big place that we need to make progress. I think we've made progress on gender roles. There's a whole different conversation going on now in homes that didn't exist 10 years ago, much okay. less 20 or 30 years ago. That conversation needs to go further, but it's happening. So I think that we've made a lot of progress, but I think using our voices, speaking our truth, asking for what we need is part of getting us where we need to go. Mm -hmm. I think more women in politics helps. I think more women in leadership uh, places in business and in all different facets of life helps. Um, I think we also talk a lot about what it means to be a leader. Uh, I often talk about being a leader in your own home, being a leader in your own life. I think that's super important. And what I mean by that is knowing what you want to do with your life, I think is the most important thing for any one person. Uh, people get, I think, sidetracked thinking, oh my God, I have to change the world. Um, I think it's really important to know who you are what you want to do with your life, what leadership means to you. And that could be, I want to lead in my family. I want to be the best mother that I can be at this decade of my life. That's as far as I want to go. I want to be the best mm -hmm. daughter I can be, the best employee. And I think owning your choices is a really powerful aspect of leadership. Being grounded in your own choices, secure in them, 
and then being open that those choices will change as you may change. Mm -hmm. So I think, uh, I guess the long-winded answer to all of that is that we've come really far and we have uh, further to go. But I am encouraged by how far we've come. That's great. Um, I think as a collective, we absolutely are very encouraged. And I really like that point that you emphasized around being comfortable and even being a leader in, in your home or, or of your own life, right? We, we as women have a lot of aspirations and, and hopes and, and we chase many dreams, which is wonderful, but you can start with some very basic steps. Um, yeah, I, I think that, yeah. that's super important. I think there's a lot of pressure on women today, right. women feel a lot of pressure to be perfect in so many areas of their life. They feel, um, wow, look at that woman. She just had uh, two kids. She's already in a size six jean. She's running a business. She's an entrepreneur. <laughs> oh my God, what about me? I feel bad. Right. And I think that's, um, it's really important to kind of keep your eyes on your own self, to think about what works for you, and also not to kind of focus on what someone else is doing because we never really know what's mm -hmm. going on in that person's life. Right. They may be pre presenting some image that might not actually even be accurate. And my experience is that that so often is the case. So right. it's best to just focus on your kitchen table uh, in your own spirit and self and try to move yourself forward. That, that's great advice. And, and you're an incredible role model um, for many people and many people um, with us here today. You mentioned, though, um, career and, and family and, and managing and juggling. And do you think women have to make a choice? Like, can, can both be unified as we think about a very successful career and raising a family and it doesn't have to be one or the other? How have you experienced that? Well, once again, that's we could talk for an hour about that <laughs> one single subject. Right. I think uh, I always try to say to define what is your definition of success. Um, right. You know, is success being on the cover of a magazine? Is success making a certain amount of money? Is success being successful in the eyes of your friend? Mm -hmm. What is success? And I found myself having that conversation with myself after the birth of my first child. I was like, okay, wait a second you know, what is success going to look like for me? And mm. it's different now that I have a child than I thought it was. And it has changed. It changed with every new child. It has changed with age. But I think trying to have as much control over my time became my definition of success. Mm -hmm. Being able to take my kids to school was a definition of success for me. Being able to go to their after-school activities, being able to manage my work, in a way that allowed me to parent. It affected my career, uh, but it turned out to be the right choice for me. And many mm -hmm. people would say to me, well, you know, you could be doing more in your career and why aren't you? And I was like, well, because I can't do that and also mother the way I want to mother. So I think kind of being confident in what success is to you. I think for many people, obviously the vast majority of people don't have a choice in uh, determining whether they can work outside the home and parent. Mm -hmm. um, and so trying to manage that, uh, having a living wage, being able to find, uh, once again, coming back to family leave, coming back to affordable okay. daycare. Uh, these are all huge issues that impact how you can work in your kind of feeling of success. But I think we want to look at ourselves, I try to look at as a holistic human being right? How am I at home? Um, is that person in collaboration with the person I am at work? Am I the kind of person leading my team that I like, that I admire, that I respect? Is that person I'm looking at in the mirror someone uh, that I can look up to and look at and be okay with? And I think it's uh, a matter also of being gentle with ourselves as we progress. I think, you know, I'm very different today than I was when I was 20 right. and I was 30. And I think, you know, this is a marathon, this life, right? right. Our careers, they're a marathon. They're a journey. And mm -hmm. I think young women are really hard on themselves. I see a lot of anxiety out there, a lot of stress, a lot of people coming to me going, I can't find my purpose. I need to find my purpose. I need to change the world. Breathe, you know, breathe. <laughs> I think, you know, it's your purpose will come 
uh, when you're quiet. I love that. I love that. Um, be at peace, be comfortable, yet that will bring confidence. And um, this is a journey. I think that's a terrific reminder to everybody here today. It, it's not a sprint. Um, as we think about running this marathon and we evolve and grow throughout every phase of our lives. Um, Maria, it's been a pleasure to um, chat with you today. A, a lot of advice, real content rich um, advice for everybody here today. And I'm sure we have some great takeaways from you. Thank you so much for your Thank time. Thank you. And I just want to encourage uh, the young women that are here today to stay the course. As you said there, it is a marathon to be gentle with themselves, compassionate with themselves, um, because the way you are with yourself is the way you are out in the world. And so if you want someone to be like that to you, be like that to yourself, and you will be like that to others. And I have no doubt uh, that all of us are here for a distinct and divine purpose. Our job is to find what that is and then to bring it to the world, because definitely the world needs us. Fantastic. Thank you, Maria. Thank Very you. much appreciated. Take care. Thank you.